I have PhD in thermal dynamics. I am graduated for St. Petersburg Institute. Uh, then PhD thesis in Moscow Technological Institute. And I am born in Bulgaria. Then I used to live in many countries. I was professor in university professor in Bulgaria, Algeria. I used to work as a manager, production manager of big company. A different position in PAP. So manager in big company, professor, research scientist. Then I started to work about 20 years ago on quantum energy from Paul White in Bulgaria. Then I was invited from a small company in California. And then a friend of mine, actually I met him in Silicon Valley. This person was from my country, very rich person. He had big company. And he helped me, he made for me a swap, helped me to continue my research on ball lightning. Then we created several uh, generators, experimental generators for investigation on ball lightning. This was very good period because I had possibility to investigate uh, all physical features of ball lightning. Behavior, physical. So I understood what is this ball light. I developed uh, technologies to create uh, ball lightning, is artificial ball lighting in continuous regime. So many hours, non-stop. In such way I could investigate this phenomenon. Even though we created robotic generator with hands inside vacuum chamber, we could manipulate ball lightning. Uh, so this was very good period. I understood uh, the nature of ball lighting. In parallel, I developed a theory of ball lighting. Theory. It's very important when you develop theory and you have possibility to make experiments. Sometimes people can make mistakes, you know, but you check in practice, experiment. So I finally understood that ball lighting is a giant macro object, giant atom, quantum nuclei, big as my head. <laughs> yeah. So, around this central nuclear body, quantum, there's silicon cloud with trillions of trillions electrons, 10 on 20 magnitudes. So this is a giant atom. This giant atom is uh, you know, in, uh, this obey, this quantum object will be principle, quantum principle, poly quantum principle. So all electrons are stuffed on different energy levels. You can imagine 10 on magnitude tuning. One with tuning zero behind. How many electrons? And they are all stuffed accordingly. Of course, at the moment of formation of ball lightning, this energy is not available around. It's huge energy. This energy you can calculate is some of quantum electrons they have energy much bigger than cosmic rays. Where this energy comes from? From nowhere. This quantum effect. This is a violation of all conservation of energy. You know, this heresy looks heresy. But it is heresy for a matter we know, you know. Matter composed by individual par particles, normal state of matter. Uh, this normal state of matter around us obey physical laws. But ball lightning, quantum object, is different state of matter. It's quantum object. One unit. You, you cannot divide in parts. There's no points, distinguished points, areas. If you touch here, you touch everywhere. I had such an experiment. I touch one point, I see that the effect is on the whole surface. Anyway, so this energy is because of this quantum effect, poly quantum effect. It comes from nowhere. How to use it? For many years I had problem 
if uh, ball lightning, you don't make anything with ball light, this energy is hidden. You cannot use it. This energy exists, but you cannot use it. So, and finally, I found a way, a few ways, how to excite ball lightning. I call it this excitement. And then, excited ball lightning radiates this energy in form of photons. Light, X-rays, gamma rays, very energy. So, this is extra power. I had uh, five, six actually now, demonstration devices in Gemina. One, two, three, six, four, five. Uh, six, actually. Uh, and uh, on these devices, generator, I was able to produce about 30% over unit. So input power, for example, one input power, outside is 1.3. And very reliable. 30% is very good, it's exciting. But not enough to make uh, practical application. So for me, important was to find a way to produce at least three times all the unit. Three times because I need to create stand alone generator. That means no energy source from outside. You put here generator, you have no fuel, no electricity from outside, and this generator produces power, electricity, heat, any kind of uh, different. So no, this is very important. And my research, theoretical and practical, saw me that three factors are very important. First, for our unit. First is input microwave power. Actually, I use microwave power, energy, to produce uh, ball light. And uh, so my research shows that more is higher is input microwave power, and uh, all unity goes not straight line, but like exponent. Very important. And my research shows that about 100 kilowatts input power will give me very high over unit. What I'm doing now. Even though I use more than 100 kilowatts input microwave power. The second factor is uh, pressure of the working gas. I create ball lighting in air. Air is not fuel. Air is just a media in which ball lighting exists. So pressure. Here I... Uh, during many years, I worked by one atmosphere because construction is very difficult to make under pressure. Now I'm working, I'm creating one generator under a very high pressure, up to 160 um, atmosphere or about 2,500 psi. So in this very dense media, ball light is in contact with this very dense media. It can exchange this quantum energy with more stuff, you know, one cubic inch air under 160 atmosphere has a lot of, many times more stuff. So it's very important to get more over unit additional. And third factor is uh, excitement, powerful ex excitement, very important factor. So if you excite a lot of ball light, it can radiate this extra power many times. So I combined these three factors in one. And now I'm working for the... Uh, so I don't want to tell some details because it's for business, you know. Now I'm working for business. I'm creating four technological prototypes, one megawatt each for different applications. I hope by the end of this year I will have this four. And next year I could work on the creation of commercial prototypes. Difference between technological and commercial is that technological is uh, to create technology, parameters, everything. You know, but technological is big, you know. Commercial is compact, safe, easy to manufacture, with cheaper material, you know. But having Technology, I can very easy to build uh, commercial. So my goal is to, to go to business. These generators, one megawatt generators, can produce uh, electricity, uh, heat, 
Hatwaller, Hatter, and hydrogen. Why hydrogen? This technology, hydrogen, pure hydrogen, is just byproduct. It helped me, helps me to produce electricity, to convert heat into electricity. So hydrogen, you know, hydrogen is very important material. Now hydrogen is so expensive because hydrogen is produced out of uh, methane gas. Forty percent of methane goes to produce hydrogen instead to be used for houses, for you know, mm -hmm. because this is uh, the most uh, reliable technologically uh, process from methane. But hydrogen goes to upgrade uh, oil, heavy fractions. Hydrogen has so many applications for uh, ammonia, you know, for fertilizer. <coughs> this business is 220 billion dollars only on American company, huge business. <coughs> and this business, uh, this hydrogen, now is so high priced, so it cannot be used for heavy fashion oil. You know, even though in Canada, Canada has, Alberta has 180 billion barrels reserves, oil, but it's sand, sand oil, in the sand and heavy fractions. If they have enough energy, uh, energy, water, steam, hydrogen, they can start, uh, they can become more producer than Saudi Arabia. But I don't believe in future of oil. I had chance last month to meet very important people in the world connected with all industry. They say, sir, we know very well that oil will be over within five, ten years. They know that. They are preparing for this future. So they're oil producers, but they know the situation better than anybody. They know five to ten years. So they are trying to reinvest in another thing. And they are looking for a reliable technology, you know. So they are not stupid. They, are, they have very good information. And it's uh, somebody telling me, they will kill you. No, they will not kill me. They have interest to take this business, to reinvest, you know. So I appreciate, to, I, uh, I think also, five to ten years. So my generators, they are one megawatt or one thousand kilowatts. They are middle, middle power generators. They will supply with electricity, hot water, hot air, hydrogen if needed. Small community of houses, say 50 houses. For example, you have like neighborhood transformer, some small houses, small. These dimensions are not big. Uh, you produce this power there. Underground, some pipes for cable for electricity, uh, hot water, hot air. This will be not so long, it will be 100, 200 yards, return with insulation. So every house will be supplied with electricity a lot, hot water for baths, pools, and hot air for heating, if needed hydrogen for gas, for example. So they don't pay any utility bills. They just buy this generator, or some company will depending, they will just pay money to buy this generator and to maintain more than 20 years some maintenance. They could pay, for example, $50 a month every family, like insurance for maintenance. Some company will maintain. And this generator can be connected between them, for example, some network of generator. If something happens with generator, next, next generator will provide this energy. So I don't think big power quantum energy generator has future. I was asked for very rich investors. They say, can you build for us 2,000, 5,000 or 10,000 megawatt generator? You know, now nuclear power plant reactors are for 1,000. Too big. But 10,000, 10,000 more power. I could with, of course, much more money, people, three, four years. But I don't see sense in this. Can you imagine to, con to concentrate this huge power, power in one place? This huge power, it's dangerous. Some terrorist act, some explosion, or some explosion because of uh, 
treatment, so manipulations, some errors. It's crucial. This can destroy the whole country. So I don't think big, it's possible to create even though safe, very safe. There's no nuclear waste, absolutely. These are photons. You stop the process, nothing. So no nuclear waste, no dangers. They, they are safe. But anyway, big power in one place is not safe. Some mistake, you know. Because it's huge power. So I don't think maybe we'll build in the future 1,000, 2,000 megawatt, like nuclear power plants. But to go to very high power, why? You know, why? So, but who knows? Future will show. Because, you know, small, middle size, they can supply some community house, some business, business, plants, locomotive, you can put a locomotive this, boat, airplane, you know. For now, it's easy for me to make generator for big uh, engines, big, I mean, boat, airplane, uh, big trucks for uh, locomotives, but to create for cars, small compact, it's difficult for me, but I'm sure it, uh, we can, within five years, five, ten years, can be compact. Or we'll combine quantum energy or with, for example, first five to ten years, I think better is my technology produce a lot of electricity, three. Heat, hot, steam water, for example, hydrogen. So you can use these three elements to produce synthetic hydrocarbons. How? For example, methane. Methane is, is carbon and hydrogen. I have a, an energy. I have a lot of hydrogen, energy. Carbon, everywhere they are coal. Anyway, coal is cheap, unlimited reserve of coal. Coal must be in powder, powder, powder with hydrogen, you know, under high pressure you produce a lot of methane, synthetic, synthetic methane. Or even the more liquid hydrocarbon. There are such technology. You know, hydrogen, uh, water steam, very, uh, you can produce any kind uh, uh, of uh, synthetic hydrocarbons, including gasoline, diesel. But, you know, Germany, during World War II, produced synthetic liquid uh, diesel. Another, you know, very expensive, expensive, but in my technology, it's absolutely not expensive, large amount. We can use the same refiners with some, you know, so infrastructure is ready, just some small changes. So, my personal opinion that first five to ten years, we can produce enormous amount of uh, synthetic hydrocarbons. We don't need any import of oil, gas from Middle East, from Nigeria, from Venezuela, from everywhere. We can produce everything here, even though two times more than we need. The price will uh, drop very much, you know. So, I, because look, these cars, everywhere, cars, there are, I don't know, hundreds of millions of cars and you know, in the world. You cannot throw them away because we have quantum energy. They will continue to circulate five to ten years with uh, this synthetic, you know. Of course, it's uh, not too good for the environment, but much better than to import so expensive our living standard to, you know, now our living standard drops only because of uh, very expensive energy sources, mostly oil, gas. You know, our living standard will be very higher with, uh, you know, everybody knows that. So, quantum energy is real, existing, and now we are working for practical, not research. My research is on. I will make some research during this construction, you know, for high power uh, generators, but uh, this exists. Uh, the problem is to create big industry for production of uh, hydrogen. Well, uh, I mean, quantum energy. Yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it. Uh, I, uh, I filed some patents, I don't want to, to say too many things, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when I'll be ready, uh, I want to, yes.